So it really is kind, kind of like voting. It is kind <laughs> of like voting. <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly like peace voting. I can say that. Great. Yes. What, what's your perspective on uh, Good, you know, yell out to the crowd on on the theory of jury selection from a defense per perspective. Well, what I'm looking for is people uh, <coughs> think like my client. But if you look at the pool of who my clients are, there's probably not very many people that think that way. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's what I'm looking for: is people that will uh, have empathy with my client, may have something in common with my client. Uh, there are several different categories that I, I look at. Uh, I look at liberal versus conservative. I look at old versus young. I look at educated versus uneducated. Uh, and all those factors come into selecting a juror that I think would be most sympathetic to my case. And as Bill was saying, when you get down to those last two or three preempts, it's the lesser of the evils. That's, that's the only way you can say it because you've got three or four people that you'd like to get rid of, you're going to get rid of two of them, so the lesser of the evils is what you got. How do you determine whether they're liberal or conservative or educated or not? Uh, uh, I mean, with formal education, do you actually interview them in front of everybody? Or? Well, in uh, major cases, the uh, jurors all are required to fill out a jury uh, questionnaire, which is usually, what, eight, ten pages? Yeah, it's, it's different than the ones we saw here. It's a, it's a case specific questionnaire and it asks those it has kinds of education, education prior job. employment. Uh, it really goes into, into detail. It asks uh, what you read, what you watch on TV, oh. Oh. things like that. Ask whether you or somebody you know has been the victim of a crime. Uh, ask about your perspective on the criminal justice system. Ask what you think about uh, cops. Ask what you think about uh, prosecutors. You get some real interesting answers. Oh, <laughs> can you be required to self-incriminate? Like, if it's a case about marijuana possession, can you be asked, do you smoke marijuana? when it's not legal in our state? I'm not sure we would phrase the question quite that way. <laughs> we would be more like, what are your thoughts on the use of marijuana? Party goes his house, how do you Should we adjourn to Pullman? <laughs> <laughs> so many years ago, um, I, was, I was called to speak at a conference and I was admitted into the room and to where the interviews were happening. And um, I was not selected, and I was, I was surprised that I wasn't selected, because I thought, wow, well, upstanding citizen, you know, I don't have a criminal record, blah, blah, blah. And when I told my colleagues about it, they said, oh yeah, they never select university professors for juries. And I, I doubt that that's true if completely, but I'm wondering if there is a bias against Educated. Educated. Depends on the case. Yeah. Never is, is, would not be the uh, good word. In fact, uh, the U University of Idaho's president served on a trial jury last year. Uh -huh. Now, that was probably a mistake given the result of the. No, we've had, it's amazing, we've had attorneys. I had one of my law professors. Uh, serve on a trial jury that I prosecuted a number of years uh, years ago. We've had cops end up sitting on juries. You never think a cop would be allowed to sit on a jury, but indeed. Uh, so as Ray says, it depends on the case. It depends on who the other jurors are. Maybe there's somebody else there that scares Ray or me much more than the university professor. Exactly. So Ray, if you are trying to find people who think like your client, um, I can't. I can't believe I can't remember the name of the person, but I think you were the lawyer um, on the guy who killed those people in Kendrick and then started the place on fire. Uh, that would be Mr. Shackelford. Shackelford. Now, oh, yeah. were you the were you the defendant on that? One of them, anyway. Yeah. I'll bet you had a hard time finding people that thought the way he did. <laughs> I I did, especially. Uh, all the people involved in that case, or virtually all the people in that case, were from Missouri, mm -hmm. including him. Mm -hmm. And they think different than we do. 
<laughs> just, just, just ask some of the, the investigators that Bill sent down to Missouri to talk to them. Oh boy, it was a different world. <laughs> No. So back to that questionnaire, more elaborate questionnaire to assess, you know, people's viewpoints, etc. So do you craft a questionnaire then for each of the juror uh, trials that you are often gather a jury? Yeah. The question is whether we craft a questionnaire, and oftentimes what the judge will do is solicit suggestions for a questionnaire from us. The judge will do the final. We have the unfortunate advantage of we've done questionnaires in high profile cases in the past, so we almost always start with those and then adjust the questions depending on the circumstances. But uh, defense counsel and the state will have their input and then ultimately the judge will decide uh, on what the actual questions are going to be. My experience has always been that we've agreed on what the questions would be yeah. before the, when it went out. Yeah, we all want to know basically the same thing. We just want different answers. <laughs> <laughs> so if the, um, the, pool, the jury pool is supposed to be a cross-section of the population, the jury could wind up being very different than a cross-section yes. of the population by the time you disqualify yes. people. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. And that's the slide that you see up right, right on the screen. We always hear about a jury of one's peers. Well, as Ray's commented, uh, most of his clients don't really have very many peers, at least not ones that would be qualified for jury service. Sorry, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> um, they can't excuse them from jail to come up to... <laughs> <laughs> what do you have? At least they're handy. Um, so the presumptive, so presumption is this is... Uh, a, a general reflection of the community as a whole, as Henry Ann described. Um, what if you have someone that's, say, 26 and you're prosecuting them for um, substance, uh, they've got a controlled substance or issue like that? We call those drugs. Drugs. <laughs> <laughs> um, the law doesn't state that you have to have uh, peers as in their same age. I mean, you. You could end up with a jury that's all, you know, 45 and older. Sure could. And uh, that's not really a jury of your peers if you've got this young person uh, being judged by people that are much older. You're absolutely right, and there's nothing I know that we can do about it. And if you look at the constitutional guarantees for juries, the word jury of your peers doesn't show up. Uh, in the Constitution, and we saw those first couple slides, it says an impartial jury. Uh, and the law has developed that this jury should be representative of the community, but there's never a way to have a 100% accurate representation of the community if you're only selecting six or 12 individuals. <coughs> and as, as we talked about before, the real test is will these people honestly sit and listen to all the evidence and make their decision based just on what they heard in the courtroom <coughs> and based on the law as the judge instructs them on the law. That is the real test. Mm -hmm. And if we have a juror who can do that, then that's the kind of person that the law contemplates should be sitting on a jury. The question I like to ask is, would you like someone with your mindset sitting on the jury if your mother was a defendant? Mm -hmm. It makes use a lot of people. <laughs> so I was, uh, I uh, was in a selection process, and I, it was, it was a rape thing, and I had started rape crisis clinic in Moscow, and I said that, of course, and then I was called into judge's judge chamber, and the question was, could I be unbiased? And I said, well, I think it's a terrible crime, but yeah, I could be unbiased. And I think it got so. I mean, I it, I wasn't deleted from the jury. For that. And you know, most most people will agree that most crimes are not good things. You know, we aren't going to find jurors who are sympathetic uh, to a sex crime or a child abuse crime or a homicide or a theft. Uh, we might debate with Dulcie about some drug crimes. <laughs> That's okay, Dulcie. Don't worry. <laughs> I didn't just fall off the whole wagon myself. I remember the 60s. 